those choices working out for you. Because you're going to get out what you put in. You will get out what you put in. If you don't like where you're getting out, maybe you're not putting in the best choices. Do you like the results that you're getting? How is it working for you? You like the results? But here's the bigger question. Would God be pleased with what you're producing in your life? Would God be pleased? Because if God's being pleased, I guarantee you, your parents are going to be pleased. What kind of choices are you making? This is what I know for a fact, is God's after our heart. And when our hearts change, our choices change. When our hearts change, our choices change. But it's hard for us to make better choices if our hearts never change. Because from our hearts come all the desires to make the choices that we make. And some of you could be here and you're making one wrong choice after another. And it could be because you've never had a heart change in your life. You've never let Jesus change your heart. You've tried to let other things change your heart and satisfy you. We all heard me say this a million times before. The only person who can satisfy the human heart is the one who made it. And some of y'all could be trying to satisfy with other things. You understand, just like we sang in worship, nothing else will do, God. We just want you. But when our hearts change, our choices will change. Nothing will change if we don't change. You don't have to answer this. But you're at the point right now where you're like, man, I need to change. I need to change this. If I don't change this, then I'm not going to get this. Do you like the results you get? Life's about choices. How are those choices working out for you? If you have your Bibles or if you don't, you have your Bible app, go with me to the book of Galatians. Remember General Electric Power Company. How many of you are like, what in the world did you just say? Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, right? Y'all remember that? Gentiles eat pork chops. Y'all remember that one too? Some of you are like, you're just getting weirder. Galatians chapter 6. Who wrote the book of Galatians? Paul is right. How do y'all know who wrote a book? Where do y'all go to find out when you go to the library? For those of you scholars who actually go to the library, and you open up a book, where do you go to? You go where? Y'all don't read books anymore? No? Where do you go? The table of contents. Carter, you're a genius. You are a genius. So where would you guys go to find out who wrote the book of Galatians? Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> Galatians chapter 1, verse 1, what does it say? Paul what? Okay. So there it is. There's your answer, right? Y'all tell me about Paul. Did Paul make the best choices? Before Christ, no, right? After Christ, yes, made some incredible choices. Making incredible choices by writing the book of Galatians for us. But before Christ, and some of y'all need that story, like, hey, before Christ, I made these decisions, and now, man, I want to make some different choices. I want to make some different decisions. But maybe you need that encounter like Paul had. You need that face-to-face -face meeting for God to change your heart so that you can make different choices. And the only way you're going to make different choices is if you have a heart change. Only what? This is what it says in Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 7 and 8. Can you all handle two verses? I know it's like week four, school, fall break's coming. October 28th and 29th, for those of you who don't remember, that's when fall break is. Okay? It's fall break. All right, here we go. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. 
Do not be deceived. God can't be mocked. Whoa, didn't you say God can't do something? Y'all take notice of that? God can't? Y'all always heard like God can't. Well, here's one God can't. God can't be mocked. What do you think that means? Can't be copied. Can't be made fun of. That's a good one. God can't be mocked. Here it is. A man reaps what he sows. It means you're going to get what you plant. Does that make sense? A man reaps what you sow. Whatever you plant, you're going to get it. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. Any of y'all see the building coming down that side? It's a massive destruction, right? I wanted to say, hey, can you hop out a little bit? Let me drive the tractor around. That's right. So we're like, that's not a tractor. All right, you can follow me. <laughs> so the one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit, will reap eternal life. So how do we sow the right things? Because we want to reap the right things. So how do we sow the right things? Because we've been in this series called Unstuck. And I want to know, just like you guys want to know, like how do we get unstuck? You've heard some stories in the last three weeks of people actually bringing people to Christ and getting them unstuck. But maybe you're here and you're like, man, how do I get unstuck? I want to give you four ways that you can get unstuck. Here's the first one. Write it down. For those of you who don't take notes, you're losing out on Christian chicken. Okay? Get a free ice cream cone or a cookie, show them your notes, and you get it absolutely free. Okay? They don't give sandwiches maybe one day. Here's the first one. How do we get it stuck? Through evaluation. Oh, that's weird, evaluation. When's the last time you guys paused? Smell like never when I'm sleeping. When's the last time you paused and evaluated your life and saying, man, I keep getting stuck there? And I keep getting stuck there, and I keep messing up there, and I keep making a mistake there, and I keep making a mistake there. When's the last time you paused and did that? When's the last time? Because in order for us to get unstuck, we need to find the hang up. We need to find out, man, where is going wrong in my walk with Christ? In order for us to get unstuck, we need to find the hang-up. Like, where is that kink in the hose? Like, where is the point where I'm going wrong? Where I keep disobeying my parents time after time. Man, where I keep messing up every single weekend. Like, where is that? Have you taken the time to be still enough to think of, man, this is where I keep going wrong. Why do I keep making seats? Some of you are like, C's make you green. But C's don't get any scholarships. I'm just telling you that. Okay. If we don't fix the problem, we can't move forward. If you don't evaluate, you'll find yourself stuck in the same pattern that brings the same results. A man reaps what he sows. Don't be deceived. 
Some of y'all are being led astray from making the right choices, therefore you're not reaping the right things. When we fail to acknowledge the reality or seriousness of sin in our lives, our hearts are deceived. Some of you might be like, it's just a little choice. Like, it's just a little thing that I'm sowing and you don't realize the big thing that you're going to be reaping. Because sin only snowballs, it only gets bigger. It says, do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Here's what I want to tell you all. One of the biggest ways we continually get stuck is by hearing the word of God, but not living the word of God. Say that one again, because maybe you heard it, or maybe you didn't really hear it. One of the biggest ways we continually get stuck is by just hearing the word of God, but not living the word of God. Because you come in each and every week, and you hear it, but do you live it? Don't be deceived. Even James, the brother of Jesus, says it in James. Let's, let's see what it says in James. It says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Here it is. Nike, right here. Nike. Do what it says. Just do it. Don't just merely listen to the word and deceive yourselves. Like, go away. Hey, I heard it. But you didn't do anything about it. It's like, that's where you're getting stuck. You keep hearing it, but you're not living it. It's like, you're deceiving yourself. It's like, do what it says. Are you evaluating? Do you like what you're reaping? Have you sat down and thought to yourself, like, do I like the results that I'm getting in school? Have you sat down and said, man, maybe I'm just playing too much Fortnite? No? Maybe I'm just on my phone way too much. Maybe that's why I'm not getting the results that I need. Maybe I'm not getting the results that I should be getting because I'm hanging around the wrong friends. Maybe I'm not getting the results that I should be getting because I'm in a relationship that I should be in. If you don't like the consequences, change the choices. Some of y'all keep having consequence after consequence, and my biggest thing is I'll change the choice and change the consequence. A man reaps what he sows, like what are you guys sowing? How to get unstuck, evaluate. The next one's this, confess, confession. Confession. First step to getting unstuck is fixing a problem. You have to admit you have a problem. But some of you are like, it's not that big of a deal. We even talked about that last week. That's one of the biggest lies that anyone wants to, you to think. Hey, it's not that big. Like, it's just a little bit. I just hang out with a couple of people that I know I should be hanging out with. It's only one or two. I only hang out with them like once a month. I only cuss like once or twice. When you begin to confess it, you let someone else in on your struggle. You know, people connect with your weaknesses more than they connect with your strengths. But many of us are, like, scared and terrified to tell people about our weaknesses, our struggles. Do people know what you're struggling with? One of the biggest reasons why I encourage a live groups on Wednesday night is encourage... <laughs> Sunday school, a.k.a. small groups on Sunday morning, is because each and every one of us need community. Remember this, community creates accountability, and accountability creates follow-through. Community creates accountability, accountability creates follow-through. A man reaps what he sows. If you don't like what you're sowing, are you in a community that's telling you, hey, man, Maybe you shouldn't be hanging around them. Hey, maybe you should be in that relationship. Some of my best friends in my life called me out when I was dating girls I shouldn't have dated. Even though she might not, even though she might look good, it might not turn out good. Okay? Looks aren't everything. Beauty is fleeting. 
But a woman who prays the Lord is to be honored. The act community, the act people around you are saying, man, what you keep reaping right now is because, man, you're selling the wrong things. <coughs> this is why confession is so important. This is what it says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. But have you confessed it? Like you can't be unstuck from it if you don't confess it. Here's the third one, repentance. We don't like that word, but that's the first message that Jesus began to preach when he came to earth. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent means to turn the other direction, to go the other way. You keep getting stuck. Maybe you need to go the other way. Maybe you need to change. How many of you have ever heard the story of the prodigal son that ran away from the father's house? You remember that story? Where did he end up? He went back to the house, but where was he before that? When he came to his senses. He didn't have the pig stuff, right? He was stuck in all that mud. Finally came to his senses and repented and ran to his father's house. He had to change his direction. He had to run to the father because he was running after everything else. If we're going to get unstuck, the biggest way is we've got to change. We've got to repent. We've got to say, God, I'm sick of this. I want to change from this. I'm tired of looking at this. God, I'm tired of being around these friends. I need to run from these friends. I'm in this relationship. I need to run from this relationship. God, I'm tired of disobeying my parents 24-7. I want to make things right with my parents. I just need to tell my parents tonight when I go home, Mom, Dad, I love you, I'm sorry. And I just need to ask your forgiveness. That's repentance. That's a hard thing to do, right? To admit when we're wrong. But if we don't change, we'll keep getting what we've always got. We don't change and keep getting what we've always got. Like, I'll keep sowing the same seed and keep getting back the same exact thing. Keep getting what I've always got. We keep doing what we're doing, we keep getting what we're getting. Not rocket science, right? Some of you, I'll make a practical example. You want to be better at football? You got to do things differently, right? Keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Sometimes it'll make you better, but other times you gotta do something different in order to improve. But here's what I know it's hard to make the right choice being in the wrong place. It's hard to make the right choice being in the wrong place. Are you in the wrong place right now? And you need to run, you need to repent, you need to get out of that place. If you're in a relationship, you keep putting yourself in the wrong place, it's going to be hard to do the right thing in that relationship. And here's the last one. Not only do we need to evaluate, we need to confess, we need to repent from it. Here's the one that sometimes we don't talk about, but we need replacement. What do I mean by that? The only way to break a habit is to replace a habit. The only way to break a habit is to replace a habit. I like oatmeal cream pies, and I keep going after oatmeal cream pies, and you replace it with some broccoli, right? Some of you like, that's the grossest thing you've ever said. But I need to substitute it, right? I need to replace it. It says, the one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction, but the one who sows to please his spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. There's two different things going on here. One's sowing to please the sinful nature. The other one's sowing to please the spirit. Which one are you trying to please? Because which, whichever one you try to please is the one that's going to grow. Because y'all have heard me say before during the summer, whatever you feed succeeds. Whatever you feed succeeds. Which one do you want to succeed? Because if you... Keep sowing your sinful nature. You keep pleasing your sinful nature. It's going to end in destruction just like that building out there. I'm glad that it's actually down. 
Like it was perfect timing for tonight's message. See, I'll give you a practical example. I had a friend in high school. Kept so to please his sinful nature. He said, you know what? I'm just going to hang out with a group of friends on a Friday night. I'm going to be the designated driver. I'm not going to drink. Three years later, I began to drink. Yeah, man, I'm just going to hang around those guys. I'm not going to smoke. Two years later, we get to smoke. One who sows the sinful nature will reap destruction. It's hard to make the right choice being in the wrong place. He eventually reaped destruction because he kept sowing being in the wrong place, being in the wrong place. Some of you might know somebody who's been in the wrong car at the wrong place. Cops pulled them over, and they ended up getting charged, and they weren't even guilty of their innocence. Are you guys so to please your sinful nature of the spirit? Because one's going to reap destruction, the other one's going to reap eternal life. Some of you here, you're so stuck because you've never had a heart change. Never had a heart change. What do I mean by that? This is what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. A brand new creation. The old is gone, the new is come. The old you is gone, the new you is here. Anybody who's put their faith in Christ. Key word in their preposition, English people, in it. Doesn't say if there's anybody here who knows about Christ, know a bunch of facts about Christ, you're a brand new creation. Doesn't say that. It says anybody's put their faith and trust in Christ. Just like you put your faith and trust in the chair tonight. Here's another one. That word in is huge. Alright? Let me go back to it one more time. Anyone's put faith in Christ. It doesn't say around. Because right now you guys are around Christ. If anyone is around Christ, they're a new creation. Because a lot of you have been around church a lot. You could have grown up in church. You've been around church. You've been around Christians. If anybody is around Christians, around Christ, they're a new creation. No, 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 no. Anyone has put their faith and trust in Christ. It says the old is gone, the new is here. I give this example sometimes. A caterpillar turns into a what? A butterfly. It's a brand new creation, right? Can that butterfly go back to being a caterpillar? No, right? That's why we believe that once you're saved, you're always saved. You can't undo that because it was a gift. It doesn't take his gifts away. It says if anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. So, like, this is you at first, right? You're stuck. You're not a new creation whatsoever. But it says if anybody is in Christ, they're a new creation, what? The old is gone, what? The new has come. Because if anybody is in Christ, check this out. They're not a slave to sin anymore. They're free from their sin. Sin isn't their master anymore. God is their master. It says if anybody is in Christ, they're a brand new creation. They're like, this ain't me anymore. And some of you, that's the biggest thing you need tonight is you need to be a new creation. Because you know the old you ain't working. The choices that you're making. And you've never repented. You've never said, you know what? Hey, I messed up, God. I need your forgiveness. And the beautiful thing that happens, Paul writes earlier on in Galatians, he writes this in Galatians. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. There's new desires because Christ is in me. The life now, I live in the body. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If there's anything I want from you guys is to be new creations, the old to be gone, the new to come. 
I want you guys to sow to please the Spirit so you guys will reap eternal life. Do you like the results that you're getting? Life's all about choices. What choices are you making? Let's pray. Maybe you're here tonight with heads bowed and eyes closed. And you've never made the choice to give your life to Jesus. You don't know tonight without a shadow of a doubt that you'd spend eternity with Jesus if you were to die tonight. And you want me to pray for you. That should give you a huge favor. Just raise your hand. So go right back down. I want to pray for you. See one hand. See another hand. Anybody else? Don't want to miss a hand. See another hand. See another hand. Anybody else? See another hand. See that hand. Those of you who just raised your hands with heads bowed and eyes still closed, if that's you, I want you to be bold right where you sit. This is a prayer between you and God. This is you entering into a relationship for the very first time for you to become a brand new creation, for the old you to be gone, for you to say, you know what, I've been crucified with Christ, I don't live anymore, but Christ lives in me. So if you raise your hand tonight, just want to pray alongside me. Say, God, tonight, I repent, I turn from my sin, I turn to you, God, I ask for your forgiveness. Forgive me of all of my sins. I give you my life. Thank you for loving me, for dying on a cross for me, rising from the grave for me. Tonight, I confess you not only as my Savior, but my Lord. Thank you for saving me tonight. For all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Many of you have been to a live before, you know, in just a second, I'm going to count to three. And maybe you're here and you're like, that's me. Like, I made that choice. I want to spend eternity with Jesus and I want to walk every day with Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus tonight. I'm going to ask you to stand on the count of three. I don't do it to embarrass you. I do it to celebrate with you. Jesus died on the cross publicly. Whenever we follow Jesus, we're going to follow him publicly. We want to rejoice with you making the greatest decision of all time. So tonight, if you're here, you know what? I need to make that choice. I need to make that decision. I've never given my life to Jesus tonight. I pray that prayer. I want to give my life to Jesus. If that's you, I'm going to count to three. And on three, you stand with everything in you. Believing that you are a new creation. On three, never giving your life to Jesus. You want to give your life to Jesus tonight and make the greatest choice ever in your life. I want to invite you to stay. That's you on three. One, two, three. Anybody tonight? Anybody tonight? Nothing magical about me counting. We can have opportunities in small groups, opportunities during an invitation. But you know if God is speaking to you, the Holy Spirit is coming on your heart. You know you need to give your life to Jesus. I'm going to invite you just to stay in. We're here to celebrate with you. We're here to celebrate with you. On three. One, two, three. Anybody else? You know what?
But tonight on 9 11, there were some things that changed. Who didn't lose their life, but they gave their life to Jesus. Let's do it. So, friends, you can walk with them. Y'all walk to the green room. Just give me a Bible in your hand. You should write down this day. Never to forget it. We're going to sing here at the invitation. Maybe you still need to respond. You can still respond. You can make your way to the green room. There's volunteers who just want to pray with you. Maybe you're here. And you know you keep <coughs> sowing something, you keep reaping something that you're not liking. You know you need to change your choices so you get different results. And you just need to repent and let somebody know you need to confess that to somebody. I'm going to invite you to confess that to somebody. You invite them in on your struggle, what you're struggling with. During the invitation, I also didn't want you guys to forget this message. So I'm going to scatter some of these seeds. And I want y'all to come up and get one of those seeds and ask yourself when you wake up, do you like the results that you're getting? What do you, you need to change with what you're sowing? Are you making the right choices? Are you liking the results? Because you might need to change one thing. I need to change. But I'm going to invite you tonight to stand to your feet with me. Y'all can stand to your feet with me. We're going to sing. Maybe you're still here. You're one of those ones that raise your hand. You need to still make your way to the greater room. If you just need prayer, no matter what it is, I want to invite you to go to the greater room. I'm going to be standing by there. But I want to invite you to come up during the invitation, grab one of those seats, and think to yourself, man, what are you sowing right now? What are you planning? What are you planning? Y'all respond. Nothing is. 